What is up, everyone? So today is an exciting day. Today we are going to be assembling all of our hard work, and we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be assembling it, but we're also gonna be learning about all the mistakes and things that I forgot about in the manufacture or in the design process. Hopefully there wasn't too much that I got wrong. I always go into these assemblies like very confident, but it, there's always something that I didn't see. I think where it's gonna come in this case is gonna be with the, the entire string assembly part. So let me pull up the design so you guys can see where we net it out and we can go from there. So let's, uh, yeah, let's hide this. Boom. Okay, perfect. So now you can see my screen here. So let's pull open the assembly and we can see exactly what we did. So yesterday after I closed the stream in the afternoon, I just did a little bit of work to get everything ready for print. And I can quickly go through that while we're waiting for the last couple of things to do. Hi, I'm here. I'm here and I'm ready to go. So let me just show all these parts that I've hidden. And some of these parts are just part of the design and get rid of that. All right, so everything's here now. And then we got the big balls. I couldn't come up with a better name for that, so I called it Big Balls. What's up, Joshua Samuel? How's it going, buddy? Welcome to the live stream. So these big balls, it ended up actually, it started as a ball. That's why it was called Big Balls. It ended up looking like this. You know what, I'm not gonna give it a name because I, I like the fact that it's a little bit abstract. You guys can create your own sort of interpretation of what that is. So this is all SOLIDWORKS right here. SOLIDWORKS is the program you can see in the top corner there. And um, yeah, I've been using SOLIDWORKS for 15 years. It's a great CAD software. It really gets the job done for everything that I'm trying, I try to achieve here. Let me just pull out some of the legacy files. All right, so this was the design in all its glory. And as promised, I printed out pretty much everything except for I only managed to get, I don't know, eight, nine, 10, 11 of these things printed because the print failed overnight. Classic, my Ender 3 has just really been giving me lots of problems, but yeah, hopefully um, I ordered some new parts for it and hopefully tomorrow I can fix them and have another printer up and running. But we can talk about that later if you guys want. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always here and I'm, I'm happy to chat. Hello, Joanne. Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> so yeah, this is the design in all its glory. I just did a couple of things yesterday at the end of the live and uh, in the afternoon to get it all ready for print. And I basically was printing all night to get all the parts out. But yeah, it, they printed quite well. Everything looks really good. And I'm just waiting for the last four out of the 11 big balls. I'm calling, I don't, the reason it's called Big Balls, I can show you what, what the original design looked like. Big Balls V1 is, uh, where is it? Big Balls V1. So this is where the name Big Balls came from. It looked like this originally. And there, the design had a top cap, which I actually, that's what Big Balls V2 became. Became big, I don't know, ornament. So I've actually tried Fusion 360. I, I've just been using SOLIDWORKS for so long that Fusion 360 just felt too foreign to me. But yeah, they, they're basically the exact same. There's like slightly different features and how to like put parts together and stuff. But aside from that, everything else operates the same way. So yeah, that's why I'm stuck, stuck with SOLIDWORKS for now, unless I have a really good reason to switch then I'll spend the time and learn how to use Fusion, but I'm comfortable in SOLIDWORKS and it works well for me. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me just turn this camera around so you guys can see where we're at. So turn that off, turn that on. So right here is the final print and it's almost done. I don't know what it is about the Prusa, but Simplify 3D just like it's basically always off. And I'll, I'll show you, this was the, um, 
here was the estimate for the time. And right now it looks like we're at about two hours and 34 minutes on the print. And when you look here, it says it was supposed to take two hours and 11 minutes. I'm not quite sure what happened, but yeah, uh, you know, it's just the way it goes with 3D printing. I thought we'd be done before the live stream started, but we're almost there. It is at 99%, so just bear with me for a little bit longer, and then we can get going on assembling this thing. And yeah, it's, it's quite close. We just got to print the tips on the ends, and then we're basically good to go. We can pull that off the printer, and we can start assembling, which is awesome. So in the meantime, I can show you the failed print, which is this right here. So these were the bits that didn't quite work out. And I think there's a problem on my Ender 3 with the extruder. And that's why it was like, it actually started quite well. It was printing well and then boom, just died. But just the way 3D printing goes sometimes, you can't always trust it's gonna work. I guess the technology is still, it's great, but it's still not quite there. So it is what it is. And you know, you gotta make do. All right, let's pull these pieces off the printer here. And we can start assembling. So the great thing about the Prusa is the bed comes right off and boom, you can just like bend it, it releases all the prints and pops everything out. So I accidentally printed with supports, but you didn't really need it on these parts. That was just a mistake. It's probably from something else that I was printing. And for those of you who are curious about what printers I use, I can actually show you today because I have this camera set up on a swivel. So that right there is my Prusa. That's my go-to. It's a great printer. Then I got this Lulzbot Taz Pro. They actually sent that to me to test and it's a pretty great printer, but it's quite expensive. So I wouldn't recommend it for any hobbyists. The Anycubic in the back corner there, that thing is actually surprisingly a workhorse. It gets the job done. And then that's the Ender 3 right there. So a couple questions to answer here. So first, my degree. My degree, I have a mechanical engineering degree and I specialize in mechatronics. That means that I learned a little bit of electronics and a little bit of stuff like that. Um, and a kinetic sculpture for, for, for D, D, I hope I'm saying your name right. But yeah, a kinetic sculpture is, I'll just show you. So it is a sculpture like this, that moves. Kinetic means movement. I guess that's why it's called a kinetic sculpture. So for me, I do these engineered sculptures. They generally have gears in them. I can show you on this screen right here. They generally have gears on them. They generally have some components of movement. And then I also do some stuff that uses electronics and like computer and stuff, but I don't really have any examples to show you right now because nothing is plugged in. But if you check out my Instagram, you can see more examples of the stuff that I do. That is mechanical sculptures. But yeah, let's grab the parts. We can make some room here and we're gonna just assemble this thing. This is the first iteration of it. So there's no guarantees it's gonna work on the first go. This is kind of like the learning part. This is prototype number one. Well, I guess it's actually prototype number two because this is prototype number one right here. But this is why I'm pretty confident that if I got everything right, it's going to work. It's gonna look something like this in the end. But yeah, let's grab all the parts. We can start putting it together and see what happens. Let's get you set up with a better view here so you can see what I'm doing. Get this out of here. So these right here are, let me see if I can pull this open and maybe we can keep this in the corner. Let's see, how can I set this up? Full screen display capture this guy. Sorry guys, I'm new to this streaming software, so I'm just still kind of getting a feel for it. But if I put this here, we can make it smaller. 
because I will be referencing this. There you go. If there's feedback, let me know. If there's anything that I can do to uh, improve on the, the the quality and the sound and all that, let me know, and I'll try to fix it best I can. I was having some problems with my microphone yesterday. So, yeah, keep me posted on that, guys, and I'll try to fix it for you. Um, a, a, a 3NM, honestly, no idea how rocket motors work. I did not study anything that has anything to do with rockets. But I do know that some chemical reaction creates... Lots of pressure that gets expelled out the bottom of a rocket, and that's what creates propulsion. So there's your really basic explanation. Same clicking noise, eh? Okay, let's see if I plug and unplug the camera. The Did that make a clicking noise? noise? Let me know. Andre, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, let me know that. Thanks, Thanks for doing this. If not, it could just be the music again, which we can be kind of dead down. Yeah, hopefully it fixed it yesterday. That works. So hopefully today it works as well. Is that any better, guys? Thanks for bearing with me. I know uh, this is a little bit frustrating, but I don't have a monitor on my end, so I don't really know what's going on, what you guys can hear. Is this any better? No? Ah, oh, too bad. Let me see what else I can do. No, I don't have a mouse. Okay. What if I turn down? How's that? Anything any better now? Check, check, check. Well, luckily, we don't really need my voice to put this together, so hopefully... Oh, yes, yes, yes is good. Nice. Okay. Wow, what a relief. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Amazing. Amazing. All right, so let's start putting this together. So the main thing that I, I have to remember is, like, how... Like, what, what the assembly process is here. And I actually have no idea because this is the first time I've ever put this together, but I think Let's just look at the CAD here, which I don't have a mouse or anymore. Let me uh, fix this mouse situation now I actually don't understand why um, There's only two like dedicated USB outputs on a workstation computer like the one that I have And sometimes when I run through the USB-C, USB like, like extender thing, it, it creates problems. This is SolidWorks, yeah. Okay, so, I'm just gonna think for a second about how we're gonna assemble this. So I think if I assemble this whole gearbox first, we should be fine. It shouldn't interfere with anything else. So let's do that. Really the main thing is gonna be getting the the fishing line and I, I really don't know how to do that yet and like we're gonna learn together on this one but yeah let's start with the gearbox so we're gonna start with this right here um, I'll just throw this gear in first 
I'm gonna try to give you guys a view. If, if I'm missing you guys, let me know. Yeah, I don't know how to fix that delay problem. Another thing that I need to figure out. I need to grab some C clamps, which I actually have a whole bunch in here. I, thought I used to have a whole bunch, but it should be enough. These are a bunch of old things. But, so, okay, I guess we can have the music running. Because that's not causing the problem. So yeah, let's just start with uh, clip that on. Beautiful. Now we need this gear right here. So this goes through. Oh, actually first let's do this knob. See clamp that into place. And I know for all of you guys who want to call these retaining rings, I know that they're called retaining rings, but I like C clamps and that's what I've been calling them for a long time. So that's what we're going with here. They do, they are in the shape of C's. So, okay. So now we can get that gear into place and then we're gonna C clamp that. Thanks Josh. Yeah, I, I, I think it's unavoidable as well. From what my little bit of research said, it is unavoidable. So there we go. There's that gear system in action. And like, here's actually a good opportunity to just talk about gears. So this is a 15 tooth gear. This is a 45 tooth gear. So that is three to one, which means for every one time I rotate this gear, this big gear will rotate three times. Or sorry, for every three times I rotate this small gear, this big gear rotates once. And that reduces speed, but at the same time, it increases strength. So I get a lot more strength on this output gear than I'm getting on the input, which is the crank here. Cool. I actually think I did that in the wrong order. So now <laughs> this is the, all part of the, the process of learning the first time I put something together. I think we need to start by putting this big gear in right here. So that just goes here. We're gonna C clamp that into place. Boom, and nice, it spins well enough. Now we can put this gear in. Beautiful. It's a little tight, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, now we can pop this gear back into place and we can hold it with this shaft. Nice. Grab a C clamp, pop it on there. And there it is, that's the main gear ratio system. So you crank that and that's the output. So I believe the gear ratio is, let's see if we can work it out quickly. Let me pull open my calculator. So we have three to one, which is 0.3333 and then we have this small gear under this bevel gear is the same as this one it's 15 so it's 15 to 100 so if we go 15 divided by 100 that is 0.15 and to figure out the total gear ratio you multiply the two together so that's times 0 0.3333333333 3 so our overall gear ratio is about 0 0.05 which means for every one time I crank this crank, for every one full rotation of this crank, this turns 0 0.05 times. So if I wanna get this to turn once, so I need to crank this crank 20 times and we can actually test that. So let's just put this in a position that we can like contain it. Okay, so let's see how long it takes for this to get all the way around. So that's one crank, two cranks, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-twenty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty
honestly, even for me as an engineer, none of it made any sense. But as soon as you start applying it to something real like this, it makes a lot more sense. And that's kind of the way it works. And it works in a lot of different ways, but okay, we're gonna go from here. So this is the part that I'm not really sure the best course of action. And I think it might be best to do the strings first, then put this whole structure together. And like, I really wanna see the structure together first and foremost. So we have gotta just have patience here. So. I'm gonna use some sort of knot and try to like get the strings all lined up at the, at, in the end. Um, and this is kind of the process of like the first assembly. We're gonna be taking things apart, putting things back together, just the way it goes. But let's first figure out what knot to use. And to do that, I'm just going to uh, we're gonna learn this together. I was thinking we want to use a fisherman's knot. And this is it right here. So we're going to learn this one together, guys. Okay. So, got our fishing line. Where's the beginning of it? I ordered this like really like funky like magenta fishing line. What are we listening to? I chose the science experiments playlist and it's uh, it's a little strange. We're gonna go back to this. What do you guys think? Do you guys like the music? Can you hear the music even? I can actually barely hear it. So we're gonna turn it up. Let me know if, uh, if you think I should change any of my volume settings. All right. So we got our fishing line, maybe we need some scissors. It's pretty dope, it's purple. I don't know if you can see the color of it. You can kind of see it, some purple fishing line. So yeah, let's just tie this in to, let's, we're gonna test my theory here first. So yeah, this looks long enough. So, step one, loop through. Step two, twist it around a few times. If you guys have a better knot for me, let me know. Step three, go through here. And step four is Back through there. Oh my God, so tiny. And step five, pull. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me see if I can zoom you guys into me here a little bit. I got this massive tripod here, but let me give you a better angle. All right, so I basically need to repeat that 15 times, but I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 of these right now. I plan to have 15, but like I mentioned earlier, my print failed overnight, so we end up with only 11. So we need 11 strings here. We just gotta repeat that 11 times. That knot's pretty sweet, actually. Like, who would have known the classic fisherman's knot actually works? And then I'm gonna cut off that little bit of excess. Let me get some more precise cutters here. There we go. All right, let's repeat that now a few times. So in the meantime, while I'm doing this, let me know if you guys have any questions or you're interested in hearing more about anything that you see here or just anything in general, life, engineering. Can't promise any good answers, but I can try.
Recently, I've been looking more at the NFT space and it's crazy. It's blowing my mind. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Mateo, this is a, um, this is a, a, it's a, I'll show you what it is. And you can come back to tie knots. But this is what we're building right here. It is a kinetic sculpture. When you crank this crank, this gear is gonna rotate around like that. The strings are gonna be attached through this. They're gonna go through these holes right here, up through these holes, across these channels, and down into the tops of these unspecified name hanging weights. Right now they have the name Big Balls, but yeah. Um, and yeah, so they're gonna move up and down as you rotate the crank and it will be an interesting effect. So for the best CFD software, I have no idea. I never do any CFD, so I can't advise you on that. So we're just gonna keep tying knots here in the meantime. What do you guys think of this view? Do you think it'd be better if it was an overhead view or do you like the way this view looks right here? Let me know. Just make some knots in the meantime. It goes through that loop. Through that loop. Pull, pull tight. That one does not seem to be working as well. Actually, yeah, it does. And that's two. So the string that I got is actually blue and magenta. I didn't think that'd be such a noticeable difference. It is quite noticeable, but it actually gives you kind of a cool effect. So I'm gonna try to alternate. Cool, that's two down. So as I mentioned earlier, I don't have enough of these, but I'm gonna do all the strings, cause why not? Let's get the next string. So now we have blue. That's pretty convenient, actually. It's like the, the color, alternate, color alternations are like the perfect length. We're gonna go for approximately this wide. So I don't know how much we need. There's gonna be some waste here, but unfortunately that's just the way the prototyping process works. There's always a little bit of waste. But in the long run, I get this right. It takes me a couple iterations, but I get it right. And then anyone can print this at home and make it themselves. And there won't be any waste in that situation. And that's great. Okay, let's do the next one. And try not to hit the camera, but like I mentioned before, the tripod that this camera's on is massive. I'm gonna work on that for the next stream. So you go, twist it around the main line a couple times. Go through that loop there. Back around through the first loop. And then you pull. Oh no. So much dexterity required for this, which I don't always have. Beautiful. So I'm using a Dell Precision. And I would honestly never recommend this laptop that people have only had problems with it, but it could be where I got it from. Um, really, it's just important to make sure like you have a, a laptop with the right hardware for the application. So if SolidWorks actually has like a list of like dedicated graphics cards that it recommends and a certain amount of like RAM it recommends, but yeah, get as much RAM as you possibly can and a really good graphics card and you should be fine for modeling doesn't require like a crazy amount of power, but the more you have, the more you can do and you never have to worry. Like if I end up with like three assemblies open and all that, I actually don't, I don't know enough about how computer resources are used, but 
yeah, it, it um, just from my understanding, the, the more power, the better when it comes to a computer. All right, for the sake of like moving this along, okay, we have one, two, three, we're gonna go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Well, apparently, I messed up and I only have, let's see. Heh, <laughs> that was silly. So here's my first error. I only have 12 string holes and I needed 15, but for now it actually is perfectly fine. We'll fix that later. For now, let's just, Get these strings all ready to go. But yeah, I think Fusion, if you're using Fusion, I think it runs on um, like web software. So maybe the computer power works a little bit less. And no one quote me on that because I don't know for sure. But this is just basic understanding. I haven't looked into it because obviously I'm a SolidWorks user. But yeah, that, that might help you if you're having trouble getting the right hardware. Also, another thing that's interesting is apparently, and I don't fully understand why, but graphics cards that are good for gaming are not necessarily good for CAD. And if someone knows why, please let me know. So I'd love to understand more about it. Oh no. Cool. The old tooth clamps. How long have you been using Fusion for? And do you like it? And if you don't, why not? And if you do, why? Yes. Okay, so for some reason, we got another magenta here, but it's okay, we can just alternate it. We're just gonna go, see right, I've been going blue, magenta, blue, magenta. We'll put magenta here. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more slack. I, I know it's hard to see because I'm using fishing line, but bear with me, we're almost through this part. I think what I might do for you guys is just, we'll just do uh, like, I don't know. Maybe we'll just do like six weights for now, and I can finish them later. And that way we can get to seeing this whole thing in action before the stream is over, which I have to, I have to end a little bit earlier today than I planned. I just had an old engagement that I forgot about. So that's five, we'll do two, we'll do three more on this side. We'll, we'll spread three more out. We'll go back here, just, just so we know what we're doing here. Yeah, I'm just as impatient. I wanna see this thing working. Have you, how long have you been using both? Like. How long did you use SOLIDWORKS before you tried Fusion or like, and also why, why did you end up going to Fusion? What was your reasoning for it? Is it just easier to get? Or is it like a job thing? Like actually one of my jobs, this was like back in like 2015, they used a software called NX 
which is like, just like, like for, for what I was doing, I was working at a golf company making golf clubs and X was like way too powerful for that. It was crazy. Way more powerful than it needed to be for what we were doing. And like, I had to learn how to use it. And there's like no documentation on, on the internet. Like with SolidWorks and with Fusion, there's just so much information out there for how to use the software that you can go in blind and like get a pretty good understanding just from watching YouTube videos pretty quickly. But with NX, I was unable to do that. And it was the most frustrating thing ever. Happy to be back in my native SolidWorks environment. So we're just gonna do two more. We'll do this one here. I definitely lack patience for things like this, but you gotta do it. There's just no way around it. Unless you just hot glue it all. Hot glue is the answer to everything. This darn crackling. I don't really know what how to fix that. Is everyone hearing this this crackling or is it just a couple of you guys? It might be this, the speaker, the music, I don't know. It could just be like all of these cables and stuff interfering. Let me see, maybe if I move my microphone out. Tell me if this if you're still hearing the crackling right now. And if so, I'm gonna try to figure out how to fix that. Okay, one more string and then we're gonna keep moving forward. Hope you guys are excited, because I am pumped. Yeah. Yeah, true. So it's so hard to switch from SOLIDWORKS to Fusion if you know it well. That was what I found. And it's purely just because it's just like a different language. I feel like it would be like, if you spoke Spanish and had to now speak in Portuguese, it's like they're similar, but they're so different at the same time. All right, last one, and then we can move on. Hopefully I made this, yeah, it should be long enough. the focus shielding issue yes very likely that's what it is let me see what I can do I'm just gonna finish this last string and then we can fix the audio issues and do some shielding I believe I have a cable with one of those like magnet rings on it. Hopefully that's gonna fix the problem. Okay, let me see. So this cable,
All right, let me know if that fixed the problem. Hopefully it did. I am running out of ideas here. All right, let's put this structure together. Yes, yes. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is build maybe like a couple parts of it and then we can do it. So the first thing I have to, I'm gonna build is this section right here, which has this gap at the bottom. That's this piece right here. That's this bar that goes across. And so the way that this goes is these two go together like this. And then we can just pop it into the base and hope for the best. So it's a little bit loose in these holes. I think it will be okay for the prototype, but something I'm gonna change down the road. I'm gonna fix it. That pops into there. Okay, so now let's start feeding some strings and maybe we'll feed the strings and we'll pop it in. Amazing, thank you guys, I appreciate it. I'm gonna grab some tweezers for this job. So, see in the ends of these, there's little holes and that's where these are gonna feed through. So it's important that I just make sure that I get these in the right order so they're not twisted. And I'm actually, I'm gonna clamp this piece down so we don't lose it. Boom. So this is actually a little bit different from the stuff that I normally do because normally I don't really add a lot of additional pieces of like materials. Like normally it's all just straight 3D printed, but I couldn't get this idea out of my head. So I just had to go, go through with it and make it. And the main thing that I really think about when I'm doing these designs is how I can make it so anyone can print it. So that's good there. So like often, like all my pieces just snap together. You know, that's, that's kind of like the main thing. So when you put them up on the internet, it's as easy as downloading the files, printing it yourself if you have a printer and just like basically going from there. Cool. Okay, let's keep going. So this is actually working better than I was expecting. So I think now from here on out, they're all the same. So they just pop in like that. And I'm gonna try to spread these strings out the right way. Yeah, this could definitely be a tighter. These are a little bit loose here. So I'm just gonna have to change the tolerances on the base here. It's actually funny because I, I did a test piece. I did make a test piece, but it, I guess it was just, I don't know, maybe some, I don't know what changed. We're, we're gonna have to figure that out. I did print this on a different printer. These pop in a little bit too easily. They're a little too loose, but that is the process. So I'm not gonna stress about it now. I'll fix it for the next iteration. One thing I really like to do is like, if I'm building an iteration like this, even if it's not perfect, I can still get it to work somehow. If that means I have to glue it, which is not the plan in the long run, but for now it will be fine. And the main thing is once this piece goes on, it's gonna hold the tops of all of these. So it should at least make things a little bit more secure. Maybe that, that one's gonna get a string. And I'm thinking like this is probably the best way to, to build it for the full version when I have all 15 weights and all 15 strings. It's probably the easiest way to get these lined up is to put it in then run the string. That way we're not reaching into the structure. It actually might even be easiest to do it like this. So for each one of my sculptures that I design, I always make a YouTube video that explains the process of how to put it together. And it's important for me to have this all kind of like figured out before I even get started with that video, filming that video. 
So yeah, I actually think that's probably the best way to do it. So you, just because we don't have them all, but yeah, we're gonna run this through here. So unfortunately, like, because this is loose, there's like two things I can do. One is to reprint the whole base with better tolerance holes. And I think that's what I'm gonna have to do, but I guess I make the mistakes, so you don't have to make any mistakes when you download this and print it at home. It's just the deal that we have. I really try to reduce waste though, because it kills me to throw out a whole base like this. Even though it's, it's not a lot of material in the end, in the long run, it's only like, you know, like a tenth of a spool, but it still hurts to, to throw things out. Okay. So, let me raise this up a little bit, so you can see this. So, you know what, as loose as they are, it's actually not that bad, because when we pop this on top, it's gonna make everything stronger. So, this I designed with these little like triangles poking out. On each one of these pieces, apparently I printed too many, but there's this little groove here. That triangle is gonna go into the groove and that should hold everything tight. This actually also could probably use a little bit less tolerance as well. This is gonna be tricky. I don't know the best way to do this, but yeah, you know what? Kinda of like this. We're just gonna have to line each one up. Hopefully it will eventually drop in. If anyone has any ideas for like ways I can prove on any of this stuff. I would love to hear it. I'm very open to suggestions. Sometimes I, I get stuck in these thought patterns and you know, like there could be something really obvious that I'm missing. I'm just trying to go around and get them all in the grooves. It's like we're almost there. It's gonna be so satisfying when it pops in. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's actually solid. Not solid down here, but it's solid up here. Like the whole thing will pop out, but it's solid enough for what we're doing here. All right, so just the last prep thing we need to do is take these supports out, which I mentioned earlier, I didn't mean to have supports. It doesn't really need it, but I did it by accident. And then I'll show you how the, the string's going. I obviously took way too much, too much string. Okay, we got another like intense, like Star Wars song going on here. Okay, let's just get these supports out. And for that, I'm gonna use a little screwdriver. It's funny, I have these screwdrivers, these flathead screwdrivers, and they, they're used for like literally nothing other than pulling supports out. Moki, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Yeah. The most useful flathead screwdrivers for doing what they're not meant to be doing. I have like all different sizes, like they're perfect for this. It's like literally you could call them support removal tools. Okay. So now we need to take these strings, feed them up through the holes here. Hi. Cool. And you can see like from the side view, this string is right there. You know what, actually, I was thinking it could be cool to go across with them. Let's just see how it looks. Maybe we can jump two.
Yeah, this is great. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we need to figure out is actually like what length of string we want to use. So maybe, hmm. I probably should have done that first, eh? I guess what I'll do is I'll cut this and then we can figure it all out. So right now, this string that I'm holding on to, let's see if we, I can show this to you. It's hard to see, obviously, because of fishing line on camera is just not the best, but. So the position that this string is in right here, it's on this bar and the string holder is on this side right here. So this string is actually at its longest point from, it's so hard to show this to you. From here, let me turn on some lights, maybe that will help, hold on. So it's at its longest point, where, where are we gonna get this? You can kind of see it. See when I pull on this? Anyway, so when I set this string length, I'm gonna have to like take all the strings out and reset the lengths. There might be a better way to do it actually. I think what I'll do is I'll set the string lengths based on the longest point. So we're gonna set it to about, here's the string to about there maybe. So this ball when it's at its closest to the top structure is gonna be here. So the way that I plan to attach these balls is, I have to grab just one more set of parts. With these wedge systems right here. So I'm gonna put the string in. Okay. This is kind of like a scary part for me, but let's just do it. Okay, so we're gonna cut the string to like right there. String fish is fishing line is fishing line string. So I'm gonna put these strings into these gaps right here. And then the plan is to push them all the way down to the bottom, which I don't know if you can really see, you can kind of see. And then I'm gonna use the wedge to hold it into place. And the wedge should go this way. And it's not working. Oh, it actually is working. Look at that. Sweet. So we'll go on to the next one. So I jumped two. So we're going to jump two more. One, two. I need to figure out a better system for, for figuring out the lengths of the strings. But let's move this into a position so the string's at its longest. And then, oh man, this is like really challenging thing to do right now. I almost need to like put this string thing in its central position first and then cut all the strings to length. I don't know, we're, we're gonna try it and we can always like figure this out after we built it at least once. Or what I do is I use a system of like measurements. That's what we're gonna do this time around. So we're gonna use a system of measurement. We're gonna use this and I have a Sharpie here. So if we put this, this is at its longest. This is at its highest possible length right here. We're gonna use this really, really sophisticated measuring system. Make a line there. So when it's at its shortest possible point here, it's gonna be that far from the top and that's how we're gonna 
figure this out, I guess. Okay. So next one. So we adjust this. So the string is at its shortest possible position. And I guess we need to use our sophisticated measuring stick. So that's where the top of the weight's gonna be. And then we need a little bit of slack underneath that. So we're gonna go to there for now. Get this extra string out of here because it's confusing me. Okay. So now, let's see if we get this right. This is like, I was actually like, this is the part I knew was gonna be the most challenging for this project is like getting the string at the right length. Okay, let me see if I can get you a better position here. So I put the string in, put the wedge in on top of it. It's actually like really surprisingly holding well. Try to get this centered. Make sure it's touching the bottom. We're gonna work on this part here for sure. Maybe it's best to do this. Put it in like here like that and hold it into place like that. And then that's gonna go in there. All right. Nope, it's not holding. So when I did my test, this wedge was actually like really, really tight. But then I printed this on three different printers and obviously every printer has its own tolerances and stuff. This is actually one of the biggest challenges of what I do. So that's a little tighter there. But yeah, the biggest challenges of what I do is I try to make this so anyone can print it on their printer. And for that, because of that, you end up having these issues with tolerance and just trying to figure out like what the best, best tolerance to use would be. We're gonna try it again with this wedge printed on a different printer. Obviously I need to make these wedges tighter. For now it's good enough. But that string looks to be too long. So, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first string all these up and then we can just see if it's even working right now. Cause it's a lot of work to go through if it doesn't even work. And it's gonna be back to the drawing board. These I actually don't think are, are heavy enough. I wanted them to be heavier. I should have printed them with more infill. And like, that's another thing to keep in mind when, when you're making these files for anyone to produce themselves, that like you have to specify the infills and you have to specify all the print settings that you, you're expecting people to use, because otherwise it just won't turn out the way it's supposed to. So I'm actually gonna go against, I was gonna go a, around with each one of these strings. I think I'm gonna change that for now, just cause it's too confusing for me. I'm also, I think what I'm gonna do for the sake of this prototype is I'm probably just gonna hot glue all these strings into place. Cause I only got 20 more minutes here right now and I want this to be done for you guys. And so hot glue is gonna be the answer for this prototype. As is the answer for many of the things that I make. Hot glue is great. I have another idea actually to make the string, the string wedges more gonna fit better. So actually we're gonna do that one first. So let's try this. We're gonna put this to its position where it would be at its longest position. And that's right there. And you can see these have actually dropped quite a bit. So that means it's working, which is good. And then I'm gonna take this wedge and we're gonna use that. This is actually a way better way to do this. So I'm gonna wrap this wedge around like that. Make sure we're gonna, we're gonna use our sophisticated measuring stick, make sure it's at the right length. 
good enough for now. And then we're just gonna pop that in and we'll cut it after the fact. Boom. Wow, that worked way better. Oh, but I went in the wrong way. Ah, it's working too good. Oh well, it's good enough for now. At least we have the method down. But you can see I actually put the string in the wrong way, which is why this isn't dangling straight. I should have put it the other way. I should have put this end on this side. So live and learn, we'll do that for the next, the rest of them. But now we have a system that works, which is great. So it's gotta go this way. We're gonna to have to make this at its longest length first. The fishing line getting tangled in everything. Oh no, there's fishing line in the gears. Okay, we're good. All right, now we can use our measuring stick. It's pretty good like that. Grab our ornament that we're calling it right now. Boom. Yeah, so that one's tighter, but we're good. Boom. Another one down. Look at that, now we're flowing. On to the next one. I need a wedge up in here. Still tricky, but I think what I'm gonna do on these wedges here is I'm gonna put a little groove in the bottom of them. And that way you can get this lined up perfectly for the double up like that. And it'll hopefully help with this whole process. I'm also probably gonna print a proper measuring stick that you can like put on top of this. That will help a lot as well. So all just in the process of learning, which is great. That's what this first iteration is always about. Okay, let's see, we got two more. So we're gonna do this one next. So the process, line it up. Grab a wedge. Set the wedge. Ornament, pop it this way. Sweet. And the last one for today. Alignment, check, wedge, check. That's the wrong way. Okay, that's right. Length, check. Ornament thingy. Check. Boom. Okay. So I know one of them is a little bit too long, but and none of them are really uh, heavy enough, but let's see what we get as we rotate this around.
Is it wavy? It's hard to tell. Yeah, I guess it's kind of working, like... This one's too long in the first place. Let's fix that one. I think it's... Oh! We have one more. Sweet. The more the better, actually, in this situation. Last one. Oh, it's the little things that get you all pumped up. So to make this as long as possible length. So unfortunately, like not all things that I make work, you know? And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if my chat froze here guys or, or what. So let me know if, I don't I actually don't even know. If anyone's watching that has my phone number, let me know if the chat froze. Yeah, let's just finish this last one here. So, it's set to the longest length. You gotta get the, the length properly set up here. Ornament. Boom. Slice it. Oh no. There we go. So this one I think I need to fix. I actually know what the problem is. How can I fix this is the question. That just pulls out. I guess we can just redo it. I'm gonna go through the straight ones. Luckily we have a little bit of breathing room here just because of what I was doing before. So it looks like the chat is not frozen. Thank you guys for testing it for me. This string is maybe too short now. Maybe not. Let's get these to the longest point. So one thing that I didn't really foresee here was the the amount of shake on these ornaments is gonna make it hard to really see the effect that I was going for here, but it might be fine when they're all in. Let's just put these last two and we can make judgments. There we go, one, and then the last one here. So, as you can see, the weights on this side are at their lowest. That's because this circle piece right here is the closest to this side, which makes these strings technically the longest on this end here. And then on this side, these weights are the highest, and that's because it's the furthest from these pieces right now. So when we crank it, let me see if I can get you a good view here. And let's try. Oh, 
All right. It's kind of working. I was actually worried about hitting those weights with the cranking hand, but you know, I just you gotta be like a little bit more nimble when you're cranking it. But yeah, it's working. All right, so let's talk about what the next steps are. Basically, I'm at a point now where like I can almost get this to like production ready, which basically means ready for all of these parts to be put on the internet and available for purchase and download. So the things I'm gonna change, obviously I'm gonna make this a little bit tight, tighter because it's, it's like you could basically just grab it and pull it right out of the base. Not ideal, see? These are supposed to snap in and like not move once they're in. So that I'm just gonna make a little bit tighter. It's just changing the tolerances. That's all I need to do for that. So that's easy enough to do. The other thing I need to do is obviously need to make this have this string piece. It needs obviously 16 string holders in it. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think more about the system of how to put these strings into place because it's a little bit finicky as it is right now. But yeah, I don't know. Um, these are the kinds of things that you, you come away from them and you come back a little bit later and everything is working. So, but yeah, for now, like this is a pretty good first attempt. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm probably gonna print these weights heavier as well. I think that they need to be a little bit heavier and I'm just gonna do that by printing with more infill. Right now they're printed at 20% infill. But yeah, the idea is there. And when all 15 are in place, I think, we're, and everything is like lined up properly. I think we're actually really gonna be able to see proper effect in action here. Yeah, pretty happy with that though. So tomorrow's stream, I'm going to make those changes over and I'm gonna print them overnight. And then tomorrow we're gonna to put this final thing together and it probably should be set and ready to go. So. Yeah, if you guys are interested in the final installment of the hanging weight thing, I don't have a good name for it. It does look like an amusement park ride for sure. We're gonna call it the interesting Ruben Margolin inspired amusement park ride kinetic sculpture. For now, you guys think about some names. If you come up with anything interesting, I'm gonna have this video available. Throw a comment on the video and we can, uh, yeah, figure out a better working title for it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I'm happy that we were able to get to this point. That's pretty awesome. Um, like oftentimes on the first iteration, like it doesn't work at all. So this is great. This is better than I was expecting. And this gives us a good ground to stand on to probably finish this thing tonight, put it together tomorrow. Yeah, on that note, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.